Hello everybody, I uh, hope you're all well and welcome to my office. Uh, I've just noticed I've got some baby slobber on my shoulder, so hopefully you, you can't see that. I've learned in the first couple of months of parenthood that there is literally no point having clean clothes ever because they don't stay clean for well, more than 10 minutes if you're lucky. Anyway, as you can see, we're in my office today at home and that's because I'm talking about test prints and megapixels and scientific things like that. Before I do though, I want to quickly mention this volume through the book, which is now available for pre-order, finally. So uh, I'll mention this a bit more at the end of the video, but yeah, if you're interested, it's available on my website for pre-order. Right, so as many of you know, about a month ago, I bought this, a Sony A7R Mark IV. And uh, it's a camera that I was a bit unsure about when I first bought it, because it's got 61 megapixels, and I couldn't really work out if that was gonna be a help to me or a hindrance. And it's quite an expensive camera, so I did take a bit of a punt, but a month on, I do have some opinions, and I must stress, they are just opinions. It's quite difficult to work out whether 61 megapixels is good or bad scientifically in any kind of objective way. It has to be just based on opinions, because it depends on your things like tolerance for massive files or how many frames per second you want to shoot and all that kind of stuff. So everything that I say today really is just rooted in personal opinion rather than necessarily fact. And yeah, I'm, I'm not a scientific person. I get lost in data very quickly. So this and the prints that I show you are not gonna be necessarily all that scientific. Uh, right now, when discussing megapixels, there's really only one place to start, and that is resolution. So as you might be able to see, what I've done is I've printed on an A2 piece of paper, on my second favorite paper, uh, a bunch of different images that are blown up to A1 size that makes sense. So these are basically crops of images that would appear on an A1 sized image. And I can't remember what an A1 image is in terms of inches and centimeters. I'll put it somewhere up here. To be honest, I'm just being cheap. I could have printed these out individually, but uh, well, I thought I'd save some trees. Also, the reason for using my second favorite paper is that my favorite paper is German etching, uh, Hannemuel German etching, which is completely useless for things like resolution tests. It's really heavily textured. So uh, I think you'd learn more from printing on a carpet, to be honest, than printing on, on German etching. So instead, I've used PhotoRag to uh, assess these images. Right, so yes, all of these are crops of A1 sized images and uh, they're all ISO 100, or the top row is anyway. So the bottom row? Yes. Uh, but on the top row, we've got the A7R Mark IV raw file. Uh, and then in the middle, we've got the A7 III raw file, which is a 24 megapixel file. And then on the right, we've got the A7 III file, but uh, with a super resolution boost, whatever it's called, that new tool in Photoshop. Uh, and then down here, we've got JPEG. So the A7R Mark IV has got three different resolution settings for JPEGs. Uh, there's a high, a medium, and a low. And uh, basically, I mean, you're not gonna be able to see this on the video, so it's a bit pointless really, but what I can tell you is interesting. So I wasn't expecting a huge difference in these files, to be honest. And by all measures, there really isn't a huge difference. What I would say is that there is a bigger difference than I expected. Now for some context, and as many of you will know, uh, I have built my photography business over the past three years or so, uh, largely with this. This is a uh, Lumix G9 and it's got 20 megapixels. And I've done some really, really big printing with this. Now that shouldn't really be a surprise because we see lots of billboards with iPhone photos, for example, because printing is largely about viewing distance, i.e. if you stand far enough away from an image at an appropriate viewing distance, you really don't need all that much in resolution. Now, my definition of an appropriate viewing distance is you should be far enough away from an image that you don't have to move your head to look at different parts of it. And you shouldn't really even have to move your eyes that far, you know, you shouldn't be going like this. It should just be. You see a difference in that? I mean, basically for an A2 image, I wouldn't want to be any closer than this, for example. And at this distance, which I suppose is a couple of feet, I can't really see a difference in any of these photos. But it's when I come here, this is when I can see the difference. Now, because I personally really don't spend all that much time looking at prints really close up, this isn't a massive deal to me. But the thing is, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, I am selling a lot more bigger prints now. And I'm aware that lots of people 
probably do like to look really closely at prints. And for me, this is quite interesting because there's no doubt that there definitely is more detail in the bigger 61 megapixel file. And uh, although I expected that, I thought it would only be obvious in sizes way beyond A1. So actually, this is quite interesting. And as you'd probably expect, the same is true of the JPEG file as well. There's a lot more resolution in the high res JPEG file compared to the low res file, which I think is about 15 megapixels maybe. I'm not too sure, but basically there is a difference at A1. Uh, so for prints double this size, this is A2, this piece of paper, which is the biggest I can print at home. Uh, if I want to print A1, I have to use a print studio. And I didn't think far enough ahead of time to get that done. So if you want to use a piece of paper, double this basically, then uh, I would class the 61 megapixels and the A7R Mark IV as a nice to have rather than a must have on the basis that, as I say, if you're looking from an appropriate viewing distance, there's not all that much difference in the files. And yeah, you're gonna have to take my word for it because I'm pretty sure you definitely won't be able to see a difference on a 4K video. Uh, so the next question has to be, are there any drawbacks to using a sensor with that many megapixels? And are those drawbacks big enough to hinder me using the camera uh, just for the sake of some nice to have resolution? Uh, now there are a couple of areas that I think are useful to think about when assessing this uh, image wise. The first, is all to do with noise, and the second is to do with stabilization and resolution when hand holding. So let's start with noise. Uh, I've again taken two different photos, one with the A7 III, which is this side, isn't it? Yes, and the A7R Mark IV on this side. Not that it really matters, because again, you won't be able to see the difference on the video. Now noise is an interesting one. Uh, when I first got this camera, I was thinking to myself, do you know what, in low light, I'll probably end up shooting with the A7 III uh, because it's got less megapixels and therefore it's gonna be better in low light. And that is what conventional wisdom tells us, isn't it? If you've got a camera with less pixel density, uh, it's probably gonna end up better in low light than a camera with more pixel density. Now these two cameras are both full frame cameras. One has 24 megapixels, one has 61. So you would expect that the one with 24 megapixels is gonna be better in low light because the pixel density is less. And indeed, if you were to look at 100% crops uh, from these cameras at high ISOs, you would probably find, I think, in fact, you definitely would find, because I found this, uh, that the A7 III does look better. It looks like a cleaner image at respective ISOs. ISO 2000, ISO 3200, ISO 6400, all the high ISOs, the A7 III looks better when you're looking on a screen at a 100% crop. Uh, but what's tricky and what's been talked about a lot in the photo community over the past six months or so, and I'll link to a DP review article that's really detailed on this. Yeah, what's tricky is that people typically don't tend to look at images at 100% crops on computers. Certainly not when they're comparing images, not images as different as this anyway. And I mean, when you're looking at 100% crop of the A7R Mark IV versus 100% crop of the A7 III, they are entirely different propositions because one is massive and the other by today's standards is just average. Uh, and so looking at both images side by side in a 100% crop just gives you no insight at all in real world usage. Uh, and instead what you're better off doing is printing. And this is where things get interesting. So again, these are A1 crops on an A2 piece of paper. And I would say that the A7R Mark IV image at ISO 2000 looks a lot cleaner than the uh, A7 III image at the same ISO. And to be honest, that stands to reason. I mean, there's an awful lot less magnification having to go on uh, in the 61 megapixel file versus the 24 megapixel file. So it makes sense that the bigger resolution file looks better. However, having done research into this, what's surprising is that even when you have really, really small prints, there's not necessarily a difference in noise. Because again, the magnification level with a really big file has to be an awful lot less than with the smaller file, which means that there's more detail in that file. You can even do more noise reduction. And so yeah, there's been loads written about this online. I can't do anywhere near as good a job as anyone else has done. You can read for yourself what other people have found, but basically conventional wisdom tells you that lower pixel densities are better, but actually in real world scenarios, hold your horses. Uh, right, final thing image quality wise is how slow can I go 
when I'm hand holding to get the maximum resolution possible from uh, these files. As many of you will know, I love hand holding, I hate tripods, and therefore I want to know what shutter speeds I can reliably use to get sharp shots even at really high resolutions. And uh, well, I've taken two images, again on two cameras, both at a 30th of a second. And I did this a few times to make sure that I didn't just get duds. And what I would say is that at a 30th of a second, I'm not sure that I can reliably capture all the detail that 61 megapixels has to offer. And now that is both camera specific and James specific, not necessarily resolution specific. In other words, I've been skeptical about how good the Sony stabilization is, and it's been better than I thought it would be. I don't think it's quite on par with Lumix, but it has been better than I thought it would be. That said, I definitely can't get the, uh, the same handheld results that I could with Lumix, even on the, uh, the 24 megapixel A7 III. Uh, and so in short, the differences resolution-wise between these two sensors at a 30th of a second is, um, well, it's less. I mean, there is still a difference, but not as much. It's not as pronounced as it was on the tripod shots. Uh, so yeah, what I found out is that I'm probably gonna have to shoot faster than a 30th of a second on the, uh, the A7R Mark IV to get reliably sharp results at 50 mil. Anyway, all these images were taken at 50 millimeters. That's okay, I can do that. I can just use a tripod sometimes. It'll kill me a bit, but I do think probably on balance, it's worth it for the extra resolution for some people who like to look at prints very close. Now there are of course other factors to consider with this, most notably file size. And the uncompressed RAW files out of this camera typically are well over 100 megabytes. And I kind of thought when I took delivery of this camera that what I'd end up doing was just shooting less. Typically what I've liked to do in the past is just take loads and loads and loads of photos just to make sure I've got exactly what I wanted. Uh, and I thought I was gonna have to be a bit more careful with this camera uh, and maybe not do that so much. Um, but what I've actually found in practice is that I can still shoot in exactly the same way that I have and I'll still import everything as I always have. However, what I will need to get better at doing is deleting images that I'm not going to use once they've been imported. Now some people when they're working in Lightroom will go through picks and selects when they're importing rather than importing everything. I don't really like to do that on the basis that I think you can get fatigued when you're trying to pick images and you might not necessarily always import the best ones. So I like to import everything and then revisit images later to work out what I need and what I don't need. And that's something I'm gonna have to do an awful lot with this because I don't want to store hundreds of files that are this big every time I've been out with my camera. And it's probably something I should have done a long time ago actually, even with smaller resolutions. I mean, I've got literally scenes that, I don't know, I've captured 150 times and I've kept all the versions of those files, which is unnecessary because I need one. So yeah, in future I will, I will be deleting more files as a consequence of these files being massive. They're getting a bit bright. Uh, what else is there? Computing power. I haven't found any problems with my iMac 2019. Can't be more specific than that. So that's been quite a relief. I mean, I had heard that lots of people struggle and had to upgrade their computers. Uh, I've not found that. I'm gonna be upgrading this soon anyway. So that hasn't been a problem. Oh yeah, we've actually not talked about what I think is the biggest advantage for me at least of this camera, which is cropping. Uh, so as you'll know, if you uh, watched the video a few weeks ago, my new lens setup for this system comprises of a 16 to 35 uh, f2.8 and a 70 to 200 f4 and the 50 mil uh, f2.5. In focus? Yeah. And also the 20 mil f1.8, which I'm filming this on now. Now cropping for me has two distinct advantages, mostly with these two lenses. With the 70 to 200, it means I can get to uh, 300 mil at the long end if I crop in with the APS-C crop. Now I will never use the APS-C crop mode on the camera because I don't think there's really any point. That will take an image that is 26 megapixels or so, I think, but I'd prefer to just take the full image and then crop in post to give myself much more flexibility. The point is that the sensor can do it and uh, that cropping power is incredible. And it's incredible on the long end, but it's also incredible on the wide end. So this 16 to 35, at the long end, 35, I can use the APS-C crop mode to see what 50 millimeters would look like 
instead of 35. And if I like it and I'm in a rush, I can either take an image uh, at 35 mil, but with a crop factor, it's a 50. Or if I'm slightly less in a hurry, then I can just change to the 50 once I know what a 50 mil will look like. Uh, but basically, whatever lens I've got on, it gives me peace of mind to know that if I see something that requires a longer focal length than the lens I'm currently using, I stand a very good chance of getting a good photo because I can crop like crazy with the A7R Mark IV. And uh, that, I think, is super valuable to me. Probably more valuable than the nice to have printing resolution. So, a conclusion. I've been waffling on for ages now. I should probably come up with a conclusion. Um, what can I say? Well, the difference uh, between a 24 megapixel camera and a 61 megapixel camera sounds like a lot, doesn't it? I mean, it's more than double. And what I expected from owning a 61 megapixel camera versus a 24 megapixel camera is that it would either be a really big help or a really big hindrance because it's a big difference. What I would say though, is that for me at least, and the way that I work in reality, is that you get a small improvement in terms of resolution, and the cost of that is small hindrances. I mean, you might need more cards, you need to be a bit more proactive with deleting photos if you're anything like me, and you don't do it enough. You need to be a bit more careful shooting slow shutter speeds handheld. But in practical terms, both on the help and the hindrance side, there's really not as much going on as you'd think, given the vast differences in how 61 megapixel sounds versus 24 megapixels, apart from the cropping, which actually really does make a big difference because you can crop in really tightly and still have a usable file. And you can't necessarily do that when you're using a 16 or a 20 or a 24 megapixel camera. And that definitely, as far as I'm concerned, makes the, uh, the A7R Mark IV more of a help than a hindrance. But overall, it's definitely, definitely a nice to have rather than a must-have. And that's only because I'm doing lots of printing these days at really big sizes. At least double this size, as I was talking about before. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was interesting and uh, not scientific at all. It's about as scientific as this channel will ever get, I promise you that. Uh, so yeah, a big thank you for watching and also a big thank you ahead of time for uh, pre-ordering my book if you decide to do that. Now, a couple of things to say about it. It is, yeah, bear with me a sec, a little bit bigger than last year's, which was a little bit bigger than the year before that. This is obviously the third version of this I've done, volume three, and I'm still kind of getting to grips with what the exact format should be. Uh, I want to do this for years and years and years to come. So uh, yeah, I'm just trying to nail them down. But it does mean that if you've held the first three, they will all be slightly different in terms of size, font, style. I'm learning as I go. Uh, I hope that's okay. Uh, also, one other notable thing about this, I've done it over the course of the past 18 months. The previous two have been kind of an annual roundup of images, but we know what 2020 was like and there were big periods where I wasn't taking any photos, so I didn't want to just bring out a book that wasn't really an entire year. I mean, it was more like five or six months by the time the year was done. So what I've done is I've taken 2020 and the first half of 2021, and that's what this book is. So um, yeah, I think that works quite well. And in future, I'll go from the middle of the year to the middle of the next year, and then they'll always come out for sale around this time of year. So I'll start shipping this in the second half of November, so they should be with you in plenty of time, regardless of where you are, uh, for Christmas, if that's of interest. And I'll sign them all, there's a limited number of them, very excited, very proud of it. And uh, yeah, assuming that some of you buy it, a huge thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. So uh, yeah, anyway, I've kept you for long enough, thank you so much for watching, hopefully that was useful, I'll see you next week. Bye.